Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, we, uh, I'm delighted to, uh, to, to invite you all to this webinar um, uh, by Beauvoir. Um, and I am the Managing Director. My name is Graham Basham. Um, I'm delighted uh, today to be joined by Joe Stoddard, who is the uh, Director of the States of Guernsey Agency, Locate Guernsey. And it's uh, Joe's starting slide that you can see on the screen now. Uh, also, Alistair Hargreaves, who's a founding partner of Fairbrush and Farrell, a local firm of advocates. And Craig Whitman, who is the Managing Director of Swaffers Estate Agents, who uh, specialise in uh, open market property. Uh, an expression that uh, will be explained as we go through uh, this webinar and uh, uh, touching on why we think Guernsey is a good place to relocate. Um, especially given the circumstances as we see uh, the impacts of uh, COVID-19 and the likelihood uh, almost certainly of uh, increased taxes in um, jurisdictions uh, such as the UK. So uh, without further ado, what we'll do is we'll start with uh, Joe. And Joe, if you could just run through uh, why people should come to Guernsey and the benefits of that. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Graham. Um, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be able to address you in this way. Um, so, as Graham said, my name is Joe Stoddart. I'm the director of Locate Guernsey. Um, I'm not actually a Guernsey woman uh, by origin. I arrived in Guernsey 15 years ago. Originally, I came from Yorkshire, spent 17 years living in Paris, a couple of years in London, and four years in Jersey. Um, I came here because of my husband's job for a relatively short period to start with, but actually, we love it so much that we have chosen to make the island our family home. Um, and this morning, I'd like to paint a picture in your mind of how easy and straightforward it is um, to be able to relocate to Guernsey, as well as the benefits of island life and the attractions of living here. I want you to have at the forefront of your mind what you need to know about Guernsey's offering for individuals and families and businesses. So the island of Guernsey is uh, situated in the Bay of St. Malo. We're 70 miles south of the south coast of England. The island is 25 square miles. Um, we have a population of 63,000. So nowhere's very far. We have very short commutes, um, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, we're, we have a relatively mild climate. Um, it never gets as hot or as cold as on mainland UK or the mainland Europe, effectively. We're in the Gulf Stream. Um, and so that means that we very rarely get any snow. It hardly ever freezes. So there's no awful scraping of ice off winter, off cars in the winter. Um, our daffodils and rhododendrons tend to be out just after Christmas. So it's, uh, it's all rather encouraging and nice. Um, we are a crown dependency, which means that we have a relationship with the UK for matters of foreign affairs and defence, but we are independently governed. Um, we have our own democratically elected government, and it's been that way for the last 800 years. So that means that we've never been part of the European Union, um, and we have the freedom to write our own laws, to set our own levels of taxation. Um, and those, of course, are different to the UK, but also different to the other Crown dependencies. Um, people often assume that Jersey and Guernsey, as the Channel Islands, have the same regimes and rules, but actually our regimes are slightly different. Um, so I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. Um, we're we're also very politically and economically stable and I think the island has built its reputation on this on stability security and trust and that's been very much proven to be the case throughout the island's management of the COVID-19 crisis um, I have to say it's been managed very very well by our local politicians um, um, at the moment we are very fortunate to be in a very uh, a very good place uh, with no COVID uh, no COVID cases at the moment we were the first place in the British Isles to be COVID free so life for us has returned pretty much to normal, apart from restrictions on off-island travel. Now, speaking of travel, we are very well connected because we have our own airline, um, the company called Aurini. This belongs to the government of Guernsey, um, and it's essentially owned by us partly to protect our lifeline links to London and elsewhere in the UK. Um, Guernsey is obviously a very great, convenient location. We're only actually about 35 or 40 minutes flying time from London. So you can be in central London or central Manchester or Southampton in time for a nine o'clock meeting in the morning, um, which makes it very convenient. We're in the same time zone as the UK and obviously we're English speaking. Um, we also have a relationship with Condor Ferries which is now part of the Brittany Ferries Group um, and they provide ferry services to Jersey, to the UK and to France. Um, now on the map you will see 
uh, details of uh, airports in the UK where we had connections prior to the COVID crisis. Obviously, that has uh, that will change, and when we start to open up more fully. Um, there will be uh, a view taken as to which ones are essential. But um, interestingly, because we own our own airline, we have a lot of flexibility. So, for example, the Isle of Man is in a similar position to Guernsey being COVID free. So for the first time in many years, we are now um, starting a new route between the Isle of Man and Guernsey to allow people to go between the two islands. So that's the beauty of having our own government owned airline. It's very flexible. Now, Graham made reference to the open market. And one of the questions that I'm often asked is, can I live in Guernsey or how can I live in Guernsey? And I would say that our two tier housing market is actually the key to that. We have um, the local market, which is essentially reserved for local people. Um, and we have the open market. And the open market part A was specifically created to attract incomers to the island. So anyone with a British or an EU passport or right of abode in the UK can come to Guernsey and live in an open market property. It really is incredibly easy. It's worthwhile noting as well that there's no application process. There's no minimum revenue levels required. We don't require you to pay a minimum amount of income tax every year. Simply the fact of living in an open market property, whether you rent it or whether you buy it, gives you the right to live and work in Guernsey with no restrictions. You can do any type of work, whether that's full time or part time. Um, you can stay here for any length of time. Um, so it's really great, particularly for entrepreneurs um, and also for people who are retired or living off investment income um, and people who just want to come and operate their, build, their business and live in Guernsey. It really is incredibly easy. Now, we have a great selection of different styles and sizes of open market homes, whether you want a small lock up and leave, um, a town penthouse or uh, a beachside property. Um, and Craig Whitman, the managing director of Swaffers, is going to share some examples with you of the type of open market property you can expect to find um, once I've finished speaking. Now, obviously, um, not everyone who wants to come and live in, live in Guernsey has a British or EEA passport. So we also offer an investor visa option and an entrepreneur visa option for non-EEA nationals. In order to qualify for the investor visa, you have to, applicants have to have a million pounds in a bank account, which has to be their own money under their control, and they have to be able to prove the source of wealth. Um, an investment of £750,000 of that has to be made in Guernsey. Um, and at the moment, it's simply a question of depositing this in a Guernsey bank account or investing in Guernsey products. Or potentially, you can also open a second, own a second open market home that you rent out, um, provided this has a minimum value of £750,000. And when you're granted an investor visa, you'll be given an initial two year period to be able to live uh, on the island. And you can apply at the end of that for a further three years, which is uh, obviously subject to proof of continued investment on the island. Um, and at the end of five years, um, you can apply for indefinite leave to remain. Um, and then at the end of six years, you can apply for citizenship for a Guernsey passport if you wish to have that. Um, it's worth noting that our investment amount is a million pounds at the moment, but it will be increasing to two million pounds, although we don't have a date for that yet. But there is a, a certain um, keenness for us to be not out of line with the UK in that respect. We also offer um, an entrepreneur visa option um, and so, for example, someone who wishes to come and either invest in an existing Guernsey business or to set up their own new Guernsey business must have £200,000 and be willing to invest that in a Guernsey business. Um, the business owner must, uh, the applicant must play an active role in Guernsey business um, and they must be a majority shareholder as well. Um, but effectively, the criteria are slightly different to those of the UK entrepreneur visa. Um, it is a little bit easier. And again, as with the investor visa, people can apply for indefinite leave to remain after five years um, and apply for citizenship after six, should they so wish. Now, obviously, people, when they're thinking of Guernsey, often they will consider Guernsey in the first place because of the tax regime. And effectively, we offer a flat rate of 20% income tax, and there are some attractive caps available. Um, we don't charge inheritance tax. We don't charge capital gains tax. We don't have VAT or any goods and sales cap tax. There's no wealth or estate taxes of any kind. Um, and the company standard rate of tax is 0%. 
Now, in terms of tax caps, um, Guernsey, uh, there are a number of categories of residents for Guernsey tax purposes. Guernsey tax residence categories are based on the number of midnights that an individual spends on the island. So it's the same principle as the UK's midnight test. Days of arrival are counted, but days of departure aren't. Um, and so, for example, someone who is considered as resident only would can apply to pay a standard charge of 30,000 per annum. Someone who is solely or principally resident who has only non-Guernsey source income would benefit from a cap at 130,000 pounds. And anybody who is solely or principally resident with uh, income which is both from Guernsey and not, not from Guernsey uh, could benefit from a cap of 20% uh, at 260,000 um, pounds. Now, the, there is also an option for those who buy an open market property, part A, um, who are new to the island, who purchase a property with a minimum value of 1.32 million or above, um, within either within the 12 months leading up to their relocation or the first 12 months of residence. Um, and that would be uh, £50,000 per annum for the first four years of residence. And Craig will speak a little bit more um, about that as well. Now, just to say that Locate Guernsey has an information sheet with basic definitions, definitions about categories of residence. So please do email me afterwards and I'd be very pleased to send out our tax information sheet. Um, I'm not a tax advisor myself, so we always recommend speaking to a local tax advisor who can speak to individual sets of circumstances. We have a list and, and can recommend. So please do get in touch for further information about tax. Now, as I said, people might initially look at Guernsey because of the tax, but they choose Guernsey for other reasons. Um, the island offers a fantastic work-life balance. And I think we've seen, particularly during the COVID crisis, people are seeking to regain balance in their lives. Well-being is increasingly important. People want to have a city-style job, but they want to have a proper family life. I think during the COVID crisis, those who live in big cities have really benefited and really appreciated not having to commute. And lockdown's also shown that we can work from anywhere. So effectively, Guernsey is a great place to be. It's very private as well and very discreet and very easy. There's no application process to come and live in Guernsey, um, apart from those requiring an investor or entrepreneur visa. The mere fact of being able to buy or rent an open market property means you can just come. Um, once you've arrived, you need to register with population management to get a residence certificate um, and with tax and social security, but that's all. Um, now, in terms of community, we really do have a great sense of community. At the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis, our chief minister um, started with a hashtag Guernsey together. And this has really been our mantra throughout the COVID-19 crisis and beyond. Um, it, there is a really tight knit community. People do support one another. It's, it's the most fascinating place for me as an outsider from that perspective, because it's the place where I think I felt the most part of the community, um, which is is really lovely. Um, and obviously people, because there's no commuting, people do regain time. They get quality of family life and, and generally they don't want to lose this. And there are all sorts of things to do with your spare time. Uh, people in the summer will often go to the beach for a barbecue after work, or they might hop on the ferry to firm, home for dinner. Um, or if they have a boat, they might pop out after in the evening to go and have a dip and, and go and eat their supper on the boat. Um, it's a very friendly and welcoming place. And I have to say, incomers are also made very welcome. It's a concern for some of the people that um, I've met over the years who are considering relocation. Will they be accepted on the, on the island? And the answer is a resounding yes. Um, I would say if you want to get involved in Guernsey life, there's something for everyone. But also, if you want to remain discreet and under the radar, then that's absolutely fine as well. It's very safe. Um, you can walk home at night. You can wear your jewellery. One lady who moved here from another part of the world commented how lovely it was to feel free to be able to wear her engagement ring. Um, People who grow vegetables and fruit and flowers will leave them outside their homes with honesty boxes where you can put the money for uh, for what you want to buy. Um, and I have to say, having raised children here, I think that my children have had a childhood that most people can only dream of. Um, there are opportunities for children to get involved in so many things. And I think as a parent, sometimes you can be run ragged because short distances means that they can fit so many things into a day after school or at the weekend. 
Um, we had some families from Southeast Asia who moved here a couple of years ago. And when asking them what they thought about Guernsey, apart from the fresh air and the natural beauty, which they really, really appreciated, they also commented that their children felt were free to be children, that they felt that their mental health and well-being of their children had really improved quite dramatically being in Guernsey. We also have excellent levels of sports coaching. Matt Letissier, the England footballer, um, is a Guernseyman. Maya Letissier, who's no relation, but she's an upcoming English female football star. Heather Watson, the tennis player, she's a Guernsey girl. Uh, Carl Hester, who's involved in the equestrian world. And Andy Prio, the world three times um, touring car champion. They're all Guernsey people. There's also a lot of music and dramatic talent on the island as well. Lots of um, several actors and actresses have come from Guernsey and there are lots of children going to music college or drama schools or dance academies um, or who take part in the National Youth Orchestra or National Choirs. There's lots of, lots of op opportunities and lots of things for them to do. Now, education. We have a British education system um, we have 14 state primary schools, and the majority of these are located in Guernsey's parishes, um, and the primary schools in Guernsey accept children usually from their catchment area, although if the, if the catchment area is full, then they will be given a place in the nearest school, but generally um, it works very well, actually. There are also, amongst those 14, two Catholic primary schools, um, and there are also four private schools, three of which are co-ed, and one is for girls only. In terms of secondary schools, there are currently seven states funded secondary schools, including three high schools, a grammar school and sixth form centre. Um, but there are changes afoot. We are still waiting for details as to what will happen about this, but um, it is but that there is a plan for change. And um, there are also two schools providing education for children with special needs um, and three private colleges, two of which are co-ed and one is girls only. As far as healthcare is concerned, we benefit from excellent healthcare. You can see a GP on the same day. We don't have the English National Health Service, but we have a local contribution system, which means that GP visits are partly subsidised by that um, and partly paid for either out of people's own pocket or from top-up insurance that they may have. But if your GP refers you to a hospital, um, then to see a specialist, then that will all be covered under the state's medical grant. Um, if you go to accident and emergency, you'll see very quickly basically the bottom line is that care is excellent and of course for anybody who's been following the covid crisis our director of public health is a superstar she's a virologist of, of repute from south africa she's also taught at university college hospital and it shows the caliber of people that are attracted to guernsey she loves it here because of the quality of life here um, so as far as the future is concerned um in Guernsey, we know that we're great today, but our ambition is that we'll, it will be better tomorrow. And the States of Guernsey a couple of years ago came up with a future Guernsey plan, which is centered on a 20 year vision for Guernsey. And the goal is that we will be amongst the happiest and healthiest places in the world where everyone has equal opportunity to achieve their potential. We'll be a safe and inclusive community which nurtures its unique heritage and environment and is underpinned by a diverse and successful economy. So we have specific policy priorities which have been agreed by government and these are regularly monitored to ensure it happens. And since the COVID crisis, um, our politicians are actually debating in the states of deliberation today, what we call the revive and thrive plan is the way which will be the plan for how we look to build back even better and stronger um, in Guernsey. So um, I'm just gonna finish with this postcard, this word cloud in the shape of the island of Guernsey, which just recaps some of the key points about Guernsey. It's very stable, it's safe, it's politically independent, very convenient, there's no minimum revenue levels to gain residents, we have a very attractive tax regime, great health care, a British education system, the island is pro-business, well regulated, quaint and beautiful, and it really does offer a better life. So although tax might be the initial reason for looking at Guernsey in the first place, the majority choose Guernsey for other reasons. And just on this last slide, you'll find my contact details there. And as I mentioned earlier, we have more detailed information sheets on matters such as tax, but also about the open market, immigration, and a host of other subjects. So Locate Guernsey is here to help in the decision-making and the relocation process. We're a free resource for people who want to find out more. And we want people who are interested in Guernsey to be able to make informed decisions and to have access to the right people and resources to make those decisions. So 
I hope you've enjoyed finding out more, and I'm going to hand over to Craig now. Thanks, Thanks. very much, Joe. Um, uh, Craig, if you'd uh, just like to take us through uh, on the uh, on the Swaffer side, uh, what, how you see uh, some of the properties that can be delivered um, uh, and acquired by um, people coming to the island. Uh, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, lovely. Let's move on to that. Right. So um, I'm Craig Whitman, Managing Director of Swaffers Estate Agents. Um, we are the largest and most experienced team of property experts uh, in the island. Um, as Joe's explained, the island has two property markets, the open and the local. I'm going to be concentrating on the open market, which are for the newcomers coming into the island. Um, and um, uh, I'm going to give you some examples of what you can buy and what you can rent. Um, so, um, over the over the next couple of minutes, I, I hopefully will whet your appetite with a few uh, examples of properties. But just before we do that, I'd just like to explain a little bit about the open market. Um, there are seventeen hundred homes on uh, on uh, on the open market, and uh, 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 there are two hundred listed at any one time for sale. Prices range from about five hundred thousand to about ten million, uh, or in excess of ten million. Um, and over the last couple of years, we've really seen sales inquiries and activity levels increase. 2018 was a very positive year for us. Um, 2019 was just the same. And in 2020, the start of 2020, um, it was actually very good as well. It's very positive. Unfortunately, um, open market sales have slowed uh, during lockdown, usually be uh, mainly because of the difficulty of getting to the island. Um, but we expect when travel eases that the open market will improve hugely and, um, and, we, and our expectation is that we'll be busy with newcomers coming to the island. Guernsey's not um, only, uh, doesn't not only offer favourable tax options um, when relocating, but also offers a safe uh, lifestyle and quality of life that rivals most other jurisdictions, as Joe's mentioned. Um, clients have moved to the to Guernsey tell us that it's the best hidden secret. Um, it's, it really is a safe place to live. It's secure as a stable jurisdiction. And the island is very welcoming um, and it's really easy to relocate to. I mean, it just, as Joe's mentioned before, really simple. It's about buying or renting an open market home. It has an entrepreneurial culture and is a great place to do business. We're a low tax jurisdiction, as Joe's mentioned, and the island is well regulated and compliant um, and highly regarded on the global stage as an international finance centre. It is a place of excellence with good economic substance. Um, we are well placed as well within, um, with, within our jurisdiction and we're only literally a short flight away from Europe um, and from the UK. So, at, uh, with all what's been going on in the world, um, we believe that this is uh, there's no better time to try and make this move to Guernsey. Um, Guernsey uh, has has had an incredible response, um, a successful response to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, and we've kept the island um, uh, you know, in, in a really good shape. Um, and it's also you know, we've been actually I think we've been, we've, we've we've hit national and international news over the recent weeks. Um, we, we haven't had a case since the end of April and life is pretty much back to normal for us. All our shops, our bars, um, our schools are all open. And in fact, yeah, the golf courses are open. Um, and Guernsey, the States of Guernsey is getting stuck into this comprehensive revive and thrive recovery strategy that Joe's mentioned. Um, and the team at Swaffers is very excited to be a part of that recovery process. So why Guernsey? So to take um, advantages of um, Guernsey, what Guernsey offers, all we need to do is buy or rent an open market house. There are no barriers to entry. Um, coming to settle in Guernsey is as easy and as straightforward um, compared to other jurisdictions. It is a very simple process. Apart from the wonderful, safe and secure lifestyle that we can offer, there are other financial advantages too. There are, as Joe's mentioned, there's several tax options that you can look at. Uh, tax caps that, um, and obviously the standard flat rate income tax and no inheritance tax and no capital gains taxes. Um, Guernsey is keen to welcome newcomers and so they have introduced this uh, a new tax measure which Joe touched on which is the £50,000 tax cap 
um, and that's if you buy a property worth 1.32 million. And um, this entitles you to tax your cap for the first uh, year at 50,000 and then the three subsequent years. Um, this could be very attractive for families looking who are living abroad, whose children are about to go and study in the UK, in a UK university, and whose parents want to be in the same time zone um, and near their kids. Um, or merely if, um, if your business allows you the flexibility of choosing a location um, from which you can work, this tax cap can really be beneficial. To give you a couple of examples, um, this is a uh, what we call sort of near our bottom end of our open market in terms of price. Um, we offer a wide cross section of property um, in all price ranges. Um, there's a real mix of sizes and styles of properties ranging from lock up and leave apartments to um, low price property. Um, this particular property is really good value. It's a semi detached townhouse in St. Peter Port, which is our main centre walking distance into, into work, et cetera, uh, and the bars and restaurants. And the, this sort of property would certainly interest someone probably looking uh, to take advantage of the resident only tax cap, um, which is your 30,000 pounds per annum on your worldwide income. Another example um, that, uh, uh, that I've shown you guys here, which is uh, offers a range of different um, uh, properties such, such as townhouse, and um, this is a, um, uh, a really good example of a beautiful townhouse, Georgian style, um, in St. Peter Port, um, walk-in condition, 1.55, um, and that's actually just recently come on the market. This particular type of property would certainly suit the person looking at taking advantage of the 50k tax cap. Um, we also have uh, another property um, which is a more of a modern contemporary family home on the outskirts of town um, and again walking condition um, beautifully um, uh, put together and that's a 2.25. Not just modern and contemporary we also have extensive family homes with um, with beautiful grounds and um, this is a, uh, a a charming five bed house that was actually we sold during lockdown um, it's a great example of a property that is secluded in a peaceful location within walking distance of the, of the, uh, the South Coast Cliff Paths. Modern architecture also happens on the island. We've got some really good architects um, as well. And so if you're looking to buy something that you could knock down and rebuild and put your dream home on it, um, this is an, another example of um, of, of the sort of thing that is available. Um, and this is a five bed contemporary house um, with uninterrupted sea views looking over our sister islands, which are home, Alderney, Sark, and the French coastline. Views are important on the island and, and many people who come over to Guernsey would like a sea view if they could have one. Um, they are limited, um, but here's a, a good example of a property which we're selling at the moment, which is got you know beautiful sea views. Um, uh, it is a truly beautiful home uh, with um, lovely south-facing gardens um, and uh, and in St Peterport. If if your idea of is is not to be spending all your time in Guernsey, but part of your time in Guernsey, then a property like this one on the west coast um which is where our swimming beaches are um is a would we be saying to consider it's a good lock up and leave it's a low maintenance house like an or, or you could look at an apartment uh it's a it's it's a good example of what would suit somebody who was just going to spend possibly the summers in guernsey over the past few years there have been a number of prestigious high uh, quality developments that have been built on the east coastline um, and um, we, uh, and this is a good example of one, which is the penthouse, which is 3,000, 3,300 square feet of accommodation. Um, and um, apartments just, they, they do range from 500 to 6 million. Another apartment, uh, again, just to give you another example of what's taken place. 
um, is that this this uh, this particular apartment um, is in a very uh, a very lovely block again, um, and this is actually again was uh, has contracted during lockdown is about to complete at the end of next week. So activity levels are you know there's, there's still activity happening on on the island even though we we've had the COVID crisis. Um, lastly, um, you know, not just properties to buy, you can rent. So there's just a couple of examples of what could be rented. Um, rent start from about two and a half thousand pounds per month and range up to about 10,000 per month. Um, again, it's just as easy as buying um, uh, and you, we offer fully furnished or non-furnished um, uh, uh, homes. Um, yeah, so you know that that gives a little bit of a flavour of what um, Guernsey has in, uh, to offer as properties, and um, I think we'd, we should hand thanks, over to. Thanks so much, Colin. That was a quick canter through uh, at the many properties that yeah. we have here here in Guernsey <laughs> that uh, are available for people wanting to take advantage of uh, uh, coming to Guernsey with the uh, the benefits of that. Um, what we'll do now is uh, I'll turn over to Alistair Hargreaves, uh, one of the family partners of. Uh, Russian Farrell, uh, and uh, Alistair is going to run us through um, just uh, how easy it is and um, how, how simple it is for uh, people to acquire those properties uh, through through purchase. And then what we'll do is we'll wrap up with just how we can wrap, put, put some um, structures around that uh, using uh, uh, Bogwell's uh, abilities uh, as a trust company. So uh, over to you, Alistair. Graham, thank you very much indeed, and thank you, Joe, and thank you, Craig, and good morning, everyone. It's nice to be here. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Alistair Hargreaves, and I'm an advocate of the Royal Court of Guernsey. I'm the managing partner of the local law firm called Fairbush and Farrell, which is a firm that we set up about three years ago. Um, you can probably tell from my accent that uh, I'm not a local boy, but for the reasons that Joe and Craig have mentioned this morning, I now consider Guernsey to be my home, and it's a fantastic place to be. Uh, my background is in English property law, um, principally landed estates, um, high net worth properties, but I've also dealt with commercial property um, and let me work. I've been practicing in Guernsey for about 10 years now, um, having taken the bar exams, and I spent some time in Normandy as a university over there as part of that process to become a Guernsey advocate. The best way to describe me is probably a facilitator, and that might sound a bit odd, but in essence, I'm here to help buyers acquire Guernsey real estate as quickly as I can, in partnership often uh, with Craig and his team and with the minimum of inconvenience and bother. I think my fastest transaction has been just over 14 days. Uh, and that was the case when uh, an open market buyer flew in on a Friday afternoon, saw a house that they really liked, made an offer that day and owned the property later on that month. So it shows that if there's a will, to get the transaction done, it can be done, and it's not uh, hamstrung with lots of difficult processes uh, and bureaucracy. As Joe's mentioned, actually, the size of our community means that working relationships and contacts are really important, and it's often about speaking to the right person, and we're able to do that quite easily because uh, it's accessibility uh, and the ability to talk to the people that you need to in a really simple way. And my slides describe Guernsey property as being a classic example of customary law with a limited statutory framework. What does that actually mean? I think by that I'm saying to you that the property law here has a very ancient history. And in fact, it can be traced to a time before William the Conqueror. Uh, Guernsey was part of the Duchy of Normandy, and whilst the conveyancing process began as French law, it's actually evolved over many centuries to what we have today. And that's a way that we deal with property which isn't legislated, but as, as a common practice is treated as having the force of law. And actually it's a unique, fairly unique jurisdiction in that respect, because England and Wales, for example, has a, a raft of legislative measures that govern how uh, property uh, is treated. But here we don't have that. We have a flexible system which uh, adapts as society changes. And I suppose if a parallel could be drawn to England, for example, our convincing system is a little bit like what you'd call unregistered land. It's based on paper deeds, and there isn't a central registry. We have in Guernsey only a handful of laws that are purely property related, and that also helps with uh, the simplicity of transactions. And those laws are really about um, modernizing historic practices uh, and adapting to sort of 20th century ways of life. So you might have a situation where a lending bank needs some comfort about a right of access, 
and we have a piece of legislation which assists with that. And there's also uh, documentation and uh, information around our high hedges and things like that. And like in England, uh, Guernsey conveyancing is actually a judicial process. So on completion, the buyer and the seller both actually go to, to the Royal Court here in St. Peterport, and the transaction terms are read out to the sitting judge or one of his supporting jurats. The parties consent to the transaction taking place and registration of the ownership is uh, registered uh, in the court at 4 p.m. that day. That surprises many people who are more familiar with completion taking place just lawyer to lawyer. Um, and the reason for this personal completion is that historically, and centuries ago, the level of literacy in Guernsey was quite low. And so what people would do would have their advocate read the terms of the transaction out to the court so that people could be very happy and comfortable with what they were actually consenting to. And that ancient custom and practice still works today. Uh, and we, we do it when we appear in the Royal Court on a Tuesday and Thursday. Now I talk about this customary law evolving over centuries, but in fact, with the uh, COVID situation here and the lockdown scenario that we had, the court, in fact, adapted itself seamlessly from a court which required personal appearances to one which was dealt with remotely. And with the use of Zoom and uh, Microsoft Teams and things like that was an example of uh, how successful uh, the process can be, particularly in adapting to, um, to the process of change, should we say. As I've already touched upon, um, the convincing process is really quite straightforward. And it's most basic, parties will sign what are called conditions of sale to enter into a binding contract. I will, or the buyer's advocate, will draft the conveyance which transfers title and then be complete in the Royal Court on either a Tuesday or a Thursday at 9.30 in the morning. And that way, conditions of sale um, which are drafted are really actually quite handy in the sense that a buyer can sign the same day and there's a period of time within which to do certain things, perhaps arrange finance and things like that. And there's a date by which uh, those things must be done. And when that date has passed, the uh, matter effectively becomes binding. The other thing which surprises many people is that uh, we don't have a land registry. And so the situation then is that the advocate who acts for the purchaser guarantees the title. That means to say that I, for example, acting on behalf of a purchaser, have a very, very keen interest in ensuring that there are no issues with the property because effectively I am saying to the purchaser that the title is fine and that if there is an issue, then the, the uh, purchaser will come to me. So I have a very, a very keen interest in, in that. I have, a, if you like, a personal stakeholding in the process. And so we take our title investigations very seriously. And by saying I take it seriously, it means that I will check the title of the property which you will be buying, but also I'll be checking the title of every property that shares a boundary with your property that you're hoping to purchase. And that means that it's a very thorough process. And my research starts in the GREF, which effectively is where the uh, title deeds for the island are kept, and then it follows through to a site visit, and then I will produce a report to the purchaser to say I'm happy that the process is as it should be. Sometimes the number of boundaries is quite low, perhaps two or three, but in certain open market properties I've been involved with because of the sheer size of the property, it's been north of 15 boundaries, which led to, in this instance, a leverage file, probably three or four of leverage files, should I say, of title, which was uh, we needed to report back on. Another way that we can help smooth the process and keep things nice and simple is to use what we call powers of attorney. And these are documents which rem remove the need for our clients to attend the Royal Court. A lot of our clients are quite private and don't want to be necessarily have their affairs uh, in public. They don't want necessarily want to be seen in public. And for that reason, that is really helpful for them to be able to give me uh, or our firm the ability to appear on their behalf or in fact take steps on their behalf so that they don't need to be bothered or inconvenienced with things that, uh, that perhaps they might not have time to do. Often we've got clients who are simply not in the island, they might be traveling, they may spend time abroad, where, you know, for different reasons. Uh, and we are using, using powers of attorney very frequently at the moment, as far as the, uh, the COVID situation is concerned. My slide says then that ownership is registered at four o'clock on the day of completion. And that's to say, it's really simple. We consent in the morning, 
ownership is at four o'clock in the afternoon, there are no questions about registration as you might have in England with the land registry and their requisitions process. So it's really simple. And really in summary, I would say that Guernsey conveyancing is not shackled with legislative burdens, it's very efficient in terms of costs and timings. And although it's centuries old in terms of its customary development, it's actually very flexible and can change and adapt quickly to meet the changing needs of Guernsey uh, and its community in that respect. And that, I think, draws my presentation to a, to a close, Brett. Yeah, thank you very much, Al. That's, uh, that's, that's very good. And you can see how easy it is then uh, to, to actually acquire property in, in Guernsey. Um, what I'd like to do now is just touch on um, having, having chosen Guernsey as somewhere to come, um, one of the um, important things is then um, the ability to wrap structures to protect and hold those assets. And that's something I'd just like to uh, uh, counter through now. So there are uh, a variety of structures that can be used. Um, uh, there are uh, the traditional companies, private companies as opposed to public ones. And we can have a variety of those being uh, just basic limited liability or limited by guarantee. Uh, trust, trust, sorry, and pension trusts uh, are available and we can do uh, any of those varieties. Uh, family offices are, are very popular in, in Guernsey uh, to manage families' wealth. Um, and we've also introduced legislation to enable foundations which is really a, a European concept. So anyone coming from Europe um, can have the familiarity of a foundation, whereas those from Anglo-Saxon uh, countries tend to prefer uh, the trust um, uh, way of, uh, of holding assets. Um, we are very strongly regulated. Um, we do have the Guernsey Financial Services Commission that oversee all the structures that we put in place. Um, and the things that we do not do are the uh, chief and cheerful registered office only, shadow directors, nominee type arrangements, and uh, dummy or sham trusts. Um, these are not for, for, for Guernsey, uh, these are frowned upon. Um, hence, we put in place good, strong structures that are uh, fully regulated. And typically for high net worth clients that are uh, perhaps wrong to say fleeing um, uh, higher or moving to take advantage uh, would probably be the better way to uh, describe it. Uh, the, the advantages that Guernsey has to offer, not only on the tax side, but also uh, on the way of life. Uh, we can bespoke or tailor those um, structures to suit the family. So different families have different, um, different ideas as to how wealth is to pass. And I'm just going to go through and describe some of the way so that uh, we, we, these can be done. So a trust or, fa and, or foundation uh, is used uh, to pass ownership. Uh, and this enables ownership to, uh, to, to go between the family and, uh, and uh, uh, pass either to specific members of the family or specific persons. Um, and, and this is all dictated and, and held uh, with the uh, trust laws and foundation laws in, in Guernsey. And uh, in a, uh, uh, underneath the trust, you often find uh, companies which will own different types of assets. And that's because it's easier to manage uh, assets in, in a company rather than in a trust. So if you think of a trust as being a means of passing the wealth and the companies as a means of managing those assets. And we would have different companies for different things. So you may have a company uh, to hold property you may have a different pro a company to hold residential property, such as those described uh, by Craig in his presentation, or commercial properties, such as those which Joe described, where you buy into uh, a, a commercial venture here on the island to take advantage. Um, you may have uh, clients that move here and retain property in other jurisdictions, perhaps a holiday home elsewhere, and you may want that put in a company uh, in order to provide the limited liability that uh, that uh, a company offers and different uh, income streams as well and tax treatments uh, lend uh, to uh, uh, the, the benefits of having a, a company uh, wrapped around a property 
It also makes lending easier. And I know there are a number of very good uh, bankers on the island that can um, uh, achieve, achieve that. Uh, portfolios, uh, clients often will put their portfolio in a separate company. Uh, this also makes leveraging very easy um, within that structure. Um, specifically, uh, clients will, will, would like to hold uh, uh, planes or boats uh, or artwork um, in, in companies. Uh, and this makes them e a easier to sell. Um, we do have a Guernsey registry for boats and planes, um, which makes that uh, very easy. Um, and there are benefits, as uh, Joe described, of having a boat and being able to nip across to France or any of the other islands uh, around. There are abilities within the structures for clients to retain control. This is always one of the concerns that we see from clients coming, uh, wanting to be able to make sure. Uh, and I've described some of the things that, uh, uh, that are the ways of doing this uh, on this slide. I would be happy to go into that in more detail if required. So in conclusion, it's possible to move to Guernsey, place your structures, uh, the ease of acquiring uh, assets, and then place those assets into structures. And we can place those uh, around bank accounts and other assets so that they can be preserved, enhanced and protected. Um, you can also achieve the various necessary uh, protections from attacks, be that from uh, creditors, family disputes, which is usually the most common, uh, and occasionally from other authorities. Uh, and if crafted correctly, and with the assistance of uh, firms of advocates such as uh, Fairbrush and Farrell, we're able to create um, the, the correct type of structure, which enables an element of control to be maintained um, by the settler or person that uh, owns those, those assets in those structures. So um, one thing has been stressed uh, by all the presenters here today is this is a stable but adaptable uh, jurisdiction, and but above all, it's safe. And I think that's been seen through this COVID campaign. So uh, we would ask you to... Uh, uh, use us as your trusted advisors um, spread the word about how good Guernsey is and uh, I'll now look to see if we've had any uh, questions. We've had one question, uh, Joe I'll pass that over to you, that is um, uh, how long is it before um, you can get um, a uh, citizen's citizenship by coming to, uh, to Guernsey? Um, it would be a total of six years um, if you're coming with the investor visa or the entrepreneur visa, it's an initial two-year period followed by a further three. Um, at the end of the five-year period, you have uh, you can apply for indefinite leave to remain, and after 12 months of indefinite leave to remain, then you can apply for citizenship. Uh, we've had some more questions in. Um, we've had one from Chris. Uh, what is the value of a foundation over a trust for passing family wealth? Um, a trust, uh, as I said, uh, typically they both do the same thing, uh, Chris. Um, a trust is more of an Anglo-Saxon concept and is more familiar. Um, there is no real uh, benefit. Uh, a foundation, on the other hand, um, uh, it is typically run by a council as opposed to by uh, a trustees uh, who guide uh, those assets and look after those assets and distribute them accordingly. And it just depends. Um, uh, there are a lot of similarities between a foundation and a trust. Um, the thing with a trust, though, is that the ownership um, is is, um, is is in the is by the trustees uh, managing that on behalf of the beneficiaries. Uh, for a foundation, it's for the council who are managing those assets on behalf of the named persons. Uh, let's have another one. Um, Quick question on if there's any impact on Brexit and its status. Um, anyone want to? Uh... I would say that actually Brexit is not really going to be uh, make much change for us because we've never been part of the EU. So therefore, our agreement with the EU was via uh, Protocol 3 of the Accession Treaty. And I think we were probably more prepared as a jurisdiction for Brexit than the UK was. Um, and our trade negotiators have been dealing, uh, arranging, making their own trade arrangements 
um, for some time now. So um, we're not really envisaging. We've always been treated as a third country. So we're not really seeing that there will be a huge amount of difference. I think one, one of the things that I've seen is that uh, the, the UK is probably going to become one of our greatest competitors. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's probably the, uh, the honest truth, but uh, uh, yeah, for, from a business standpoint. But uh, uh, as we've seen, uh, it's better to live uh, somewhere here. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, and Quality of life, uh, you can't put a price on that. Quality of life, safety and security, um, you can't put a price. Okay. Um, and we have come to the end of the presentation. Um, I just checked to see if there are any other additional questions. Um, please do pop them through um, if you do, or pop them on the chat and we'll try to answer them. Uh, but if not, we are very grateful to you all listening. Uh, we will send out um, some, some notes on this and some contact details for all of those that joined us. And there should be a recording um, of this, which we can also circulate um, just so that you can go over the details. Thank you all very much for listening and for uh, joining us on this webinar today. On behalf of Beauvoir, um, on behalf of Locate Guernsey, Fairbush and Farrell and Swaffers, uh, we bid you good day. Thank you very much. <laughs>